And then if we want to, you know, if you want to share it or whatever, we can. That's you can, perfect. Yeah. You can share it, and then uh, I'll send you the, you know, the link to it, and then you can share it with whoever. And then we, can, you know, obviously, but I'm more than willing to meet with you guys some more and talk about what we can, you know, what else you can do. Um, okay. the, the best relationships I have with organizations are people that, uh, you know, call me once every two weeks when they're doing something new and say, Hey, this is what we're doing with it. What do you think? And then I help them construct a campaign that's even going to be better. Right. Okay. And you create a new piece of collateral. Let me look at it and tweak it and help you make it, you know, all that, all that, all that much greater. Right. So I'm more than willing to do that on an ongoing basis. So let's take a look at a couple things first. I think the first decision to really make, first of all, you know how to get in. We got we got we got your databases uploaded, didn't we? Uh, yeah, one was uploaded, and then and then I took our our list that we have here, and I took a whole, I uh, parsed it a different way, and I uploaded a CSV file, and and uh, you and we sent a little message to that uh, group as well. Okay, great, great deal. And you know when you're sending a message out and you go to the marketing, so you click over here in your menu, you go to the marketing platform, you've, you've navigated that with no problem. Um, oh, let me go into your account. That would be better, wouldn't it? Oh, so that short code that shows up on ours is our short code then? That's correct. Okay. Okay, I'm now I'm in your it. account. Yeah. <clears throat> so seven two seven two seven. That's a that's a short code you guys are on, correct? Okay. So when you go into the marketing platform, you hit menu, go to marketing platform. There's two different ways that you can send a message out, right? One is just a blast, right? Which yeah. is just you're creating a a message and it looks like you've done that. Happy hour at Isaac's Pickle Bar, five to seven tonight. Get five dollar margaritas. Blah blah blah. You scheduled it and sent that out to, and you selected which group, so you know how to do that just fine. There's also this. <clears throat> there's also this one. Did you do you know how to do this one? I do not. Okay. A coupon blast is where you're actually sending out a one-time redemption coupon. So in this case, you know, I would just type whatever the coupon promotion name was, and then I would say, So I type in whatever the offer is, and then I put a make sure there's a space. This is the URL that's going to link them to this coupon, right? And, oh, okay. And then I could say so you, to see so our. Be... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at it here. I'm. I was thinking the short uh, URL. Is that what will go in that coupon URL? Okay. Yeah. So this is already there. This this coupon URL is a to, is what we call a token, because when you blast this out to a thousand users in a database, this link right here is different for every single person. It's it's dynamic. Every person has their own personal URL, and when they click that link, it takes them to their coupon page. And once that coupon is redeemed, mm -hmm. it tracks it to that user, and they can't use it again. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So you don't change this at all. That stays there. And you just put it in the message wherever you want by clicking and typing in before it or after it. Then, like in this example I'm creating here, I said Isaac's Deli, free bag of chips with purchase of any sandwich, click to redeem, coupon URL. To see our menu, click here. And this I could link to your uh, website or to whatever. Do you guys have a, a good mobile-friendly website? I don't remember. Uh, there's, We have a couple of pages that we send people to. That are that are okay for for mobile. Yeah, so if you've got like your menu or something, you know, you could put it in here. If you've got an online ordering, you could put it here. You can just drop in the whole URL here like this by typing in, you know, um, whatever it is, Isaac's Deli dot dot com. What is the U? What is your website? Uh, that is Isaac's Deli dot com, and I forget the URL what I was given before, but it was like slash loyalty or something like that. I'm okay. Not sure. So whatever it is, you put it in there, you hit shorten and insert, and it actually drops the URL right in there like that. Yep, okay. See that? 
now I'm going to go down and create what this actually looks like. And uh, so I might change the background color to whatever I want, you know, whatever doesn't make any difference. And then I choose a file that I want. And so I grab my Isaacs logo, which I probably have one. There's one. And then I hit upload. And there it puts it on the page, right? And here I write out the description. And then I put an expiration date on it of 4-30-15 or whatever. Okay? So that way when they're showing the coupon, it they actually see the expiration. Your, your servers actually see the expiration date. And then they can say... Go ahead and click redeem, click OK, and then it's OK. If you wanted to add a terms and conditions page, if I say whatever I say in this box, it creates a link that to additional terms and conditions on that mobile site. If I put down the address of the location here and a phone number, then it creates a uh, contact page on the coupon. And if I click these boxes, that enables uh, another button that says share, and when they click share, they can share it on their Facebook or Twitter page. Basically, they can reshare your coupon, right? Mm -hmm. And so here you just put in whatever coupon code you want. It doesn't matter what it is, numbers, whatever. You don't have to be able to redeem it with a barcode or whatever, but this is just a way for you to be able to put in the coupon code that you want your servers to use. And now you would do the same thing. You would go in and hit save and schedule, and then you would schedule this to be sent out, wherever you wanted it to. I'm just going to send it to your phone so you can take a look at what it would look like. But I could schedule this to all, you know, all the groups. What's your mobile number? 717-572-2466. Okay. There you go. I was impressed how fast the whole experiences like that one I scheduled at three all our phones mm -hmm. got it at three yeah Rob if you want you can send it to me as well it's oh okay. Johnny's on go John hi I was just silent there for a little bit yeah that's all right what's your mobile number 717-449-0944 The way those links came through when I when I click on uh when I tap try to tap on the one it comes up at, with both links wanting me to choose one and uh of course they're shortened so it, yeah, I I picked the top one I guess that's just how you do it. Yeah, the yeah, other one now is just to see the menu. Mhm. Mm yeah, so you can guys can see so I can actually schedule out a trackable message, right? And then if I went into my rep my reports here and I went into campaign reports, and I went into redeemables, and my coupon blast, I would then be able to see how many people that I sent the message to, how many people actually redeemed it, when they redeemed it, by timestamps, all that kind of stuff. So I could even download the whole report. So, you, you know, you could, so I just wanted to show you that piece of it, right? So you guys got that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Now, on the philosophy side, the philosophical side, we've got to figure out what and how that we're going to run our point of sale campaign. And how are we going to start building databases of people that walk in the door today and get them to either text in or type their mobile number in a tablet, whichever one you guys are, you know, whichever method you guys are going to do, or a combination of both, you know. Do you guys have an idea on this yet? Um, we... Well, it's hard to say. We're not going to have uh, uh, tablets widely available for customers. We'll have them use their phones. We're, what's going through my mind is we have a, a loyalty program where the phone number is their loyalty number. And, right. uh, and we have 30,000 members on that right now, and I'm just trying to think how we integrate that. And for those loyalty members, we also have more information on them. We have 
email address and and uh, other stuff like that. Sure, sure. Um, one of the things that I think we talked about was how can we leverage a point of sale program to actually grow your overall loyalty database and at the same time build your mobile database. Um, if you can come up with, you know, I, uh, so someone walks up to the counter today or calls in and orders or however they order and they re they make their transaction, how do they sign up for the loyalty program? Are you promoting that through, how are you promoting your current loyalty program? Uh, they're actually being directed, Rob, to sign up on online. They don't do it at the location, just so that we can capture all the information. The program that we have doesn't really uh, allow us to do it right there unless we have a tablet, then we can sign them up. Um, but I thought Alan was like they were working on a way it's that like when they hit like submit for like the when they sign up for the loyalty program that something would get over to you if if the box marked uh, text is yes then you would get all that information. Well, you're thinking about it backwards though. Okay, you're thinking about if they sign if they ever go to the website mm -hmm. and sign up for that, then we send the mobile phone numbers to us. Let's let's do it the reverse because it's more effective. Right. Let's if we can. And this is what we call a mobile first strategy. Okay. If when somebody walks in the door and buys from us today, each location that we've got is running 150 transactions a day or 200 transactions a day, whatever it is. If we take with each one of those people and we hand them a simple card right on top of the receipt that says nice, big, free offer, free six inch sub next visit, whatever. And that it's a free sub with purchase of another 12 inch sub and you know, or, or with any combo or whatever the case is. And they've only got two weeks to redeem it. So it's a short time frame, okay? And it's enough with purchase offer that we're not cannibalizing any profits. And it's a quick enough repeat visit that it's quicker than what most people come in and visit. So if they actually come in, it's a extra transaction anyway. Um, but now we deliver them the coupon back, but then we deliver a second text message to them immediately that links to the loyalty program sign up. And they can actually do it from their phone. Does that make sense? It does, but I mean, here's the deal. No matter what you do, we still have another sign-up offer that comes through through the other loyalty program. So it's kind of like a, I'm just trying to like figure out like how we can like do this because you're absolutely right. It's, it would be really cool if they would if we had started off everything off with that because then they could just text that in and then. Uh, get right into the loyalty program. But right now, we already have this loyalty program in effect where we do have 3,000, over 3,000 uh, mm -hmm. loyalty members coming through each week. So I'm trying yes. to see like how how to make this work, which there is something. We just have to think about it. That's all. <clears throat> Rob, um, Rob, can, so, Rob can, I, can I go through that one more time again? You, you yeah. give them the card that says text this number uh text this code and and they they text that and that adds their phone number to your database and returns a coupon to them a, a one time redeemable coupon and then and then once they redeem it it then gives them the link to sign up for loyalty did i get that right or is that yeah watch here i'm going to do it real quick okay all right, let's create one. This is Isaac's location one. Isaac one, I may have already created that keyword. Oh, it's available, okay. And I apologize if I'm calling your famous grilled sandwiches by the wrong name, what's a, What's a sandwich name so I can get your terminology right? I'm not looking at you. like a name. mallard. You could say like a mallard if you wanted like free, you know. We usually just say free sandwich, honestly. Okay. This will work. Just for this example, right? Mm -hmm. It's just an example.
What do you get if you sign up for the loyalty program? A uh, free cup of soup. Now I'm putting the create profile for the loyalty program right there in that in that link, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I would go through and build the mobile coupon, which I'm not going to go through and do again. You guys have seen me do that. And so we'd have the mobile coupon related to that first offer. Free Mallard, next visit with minimum purchase, click here to redeem, blah, 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 blah. The second text message they get, enroll today for your loyalty program, get a free cup of soup and other great savings, click here. And when they click that, it's going to take them right to the page to be able to sign up for the loyalty program. Now we could probably make that more mobile friendly, but I haven't actually tried it on my phone. But I'm going to hit save. And now if you guys will hit new text message on your phone, actually you could reply to that last text message. So you guys just got a text message from 72727. Reply to that message with Isaac's one, all one word. Capitalization doesn't matter, by the way, but spacing does. You had the one right up against it, right? Yep. I had Isaac's one was not found or invalid for help. No, that's what I got too. Did, what did I do wrong there? Oh, because it's Isaac one. See that? Oh, okay. I didn't do Isaac's. We weren't playing. We weren't playing close enough attention. <laughs> okay. So we would have to make sure to get started that we're sending this to a list of numbers of people who are not already enrolled. You're not sending it to... Um, no, they're, they're getting it when they walk into the restaurant. There's going to be like a sign that just tells you what to do. Okay. But right. what he's so. going to have to do probably is maybe on his end, if he has a list of uh, what our like our loyalty members are already, and I don't even know like that because that changes and stuff. So um, again, like they just, you're going to just get people that might just already be members and then just go over. So yeah, you. I mean, it's not really a big deal if you you're still even if they're already a member. The most they can get of whatever offer that you're making the offer, mm -hmm. the most they can get it is one time. Even if they come in again in two weeks, and they try to text in again, they're not going to get it, this offer again. This is only the one time they opt in, right? Right, so okay. whenever they use their number. Um, I'd probably just have them land, actually, on this one, too, Rob. If we ever did this, it would just go right to the page that explains what the loyalty program is. Because that way they yeah. can see, like, they get, like, 10. They get a free sandwich for every 10 sandwiches they purchase. Uh, I am with Alan on the fact that, like, yeah, like, we there might be a little confusion with loyalty members coming in. We just would, it would, that would be taken care of is how we explain it to them. I mean, like, they would be able to get that, too. They'd be able to, to get that whatever we decide to offer for the tax program. Um, we, we'd have we'd have dozens of calls from little old ladies saying, I thought I'm, I'm a member, and now it's telling me to sign up. And then when I try to sign up, it says I'm already a member. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, we get that just with the Flamingo Fan Club crossover. Yeah, no kidding. I'm just trying to yeah. think, like, how that would, how we could state that, that that would be okay. Like, the, and I think maybe, like, not a, one of those things, like, I mean, you should be able to, like, if we're sending out, like, our, our loyalty member, um, our loyalty member program, like the text through you, you should you would have a database of those phone numbers. It's kind of like what we do with our email. Like I, the emails aren't sent through our loyalty program because they don't have a program set up. So we send those out through um, the company I use for that, and they have a list of like whoever signs up. Um, if it's already signed, it, it they don't get another one. I mean they're already signed up, so it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um... When they, 
if you're setting up campaigns like this, just to be mm -hmm. clear, and you're setting one a different, you know, typically we do a different keyword for each location so that you can have, you know, your 30 different locations or whatever with 30 different databases that each of those databases have 2,500, 3,000 people in them per location, okay? After you run this program for like four months, five months, right? Right. Um, each of those, we are also have the other databases of people that actually signed up from the website for the loyalty rewards program. And some of them may be in that database over here, but also in the store specific database. Right. But, but then when you go and send a message out to all the databases, including the loyalty database over here, you're, it dedupes, so that person is not going to get two messages, right? Right. I guess what he was, like, saying, though, like, is there a way that if they got, like, we mark on that, like, it, like when you respond back to that text, if it recognizes that phone number is already being in the loyalty program, it would not send them that additional message. Not like not the way that this is configured. When you're doing okay. what is what is this is an out of the box solution, right? Mm -hmm. And out of the box, when you create these keywords, if somebody's not in this database already, this particular right. database, right. Th that's the only thing it's looking at. It doesn't. I don't have a way to append extra numbers here for it to okay. look at, right? Without doing something really custom, and you know that would be custom cost money, right? Right. So, um, however, I don't think it's a big deal for them to get whatever this initial offer is because it's an offer for next visit with minimum purchase. And that second message could say, and if you're not already a loyalty program member, click here and you can enroll and get XYZ. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so you're given that second message that says, hey, here's what you, you know, if you're not, go ahead and join. It's not telling them, hey, you need to join again, you know, or something. It doesn't it, even apply. And again, just to, I mean, I, I, yeah, it sounds logical to me, but we did mm -hmm. send something out to the, just like our database already, um, saying like, if you haven't used your sign up reward, you need to, you know, come in and get, and, and use it before a certain date. And we created so much confusion because, it was supposed to go to people who had already or hadn't used it yet, but we worded it in a way that even if it should have gotten to someone who had used it, that they would see like, oh, like you know, it's not saying like you didn't use it, come in. And we just used, we carefully chose our words, and we still got a whole bunch of people who were like, I got this email saying I got a free cup of soup, and it's I don't have it, and I'm upset, and blah blah blah. So you're kind of like make, dumb, like making it sound like it's really simple, but honestly, in our little part of Pennsylvania, South Central PA. It's not. <laughs> I mean, I, and I just think we need to look over the overall goal. Like, do we want really want to get people signed up for tax? Yes. The way that you're presenting it is is a way of doing it. And yes, if if we have that stipulation at the beginning, that's all we have to say to them if they call in and they're all confused over it. But you know what? If it you know it says on your tax, if you're not you know if you're not a member of Isaac's loyalty program, you know get more rewards. Sign up here. So. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how that would sound, but I, I guess Alan and all of us share the same fear because we've been through where it should have been like really easy, and it's not. <laughs> right, no, and I'm with you, and that's where you know real clarity of language is extremely important, right? Mm -hmm. um, where your message is just is very clear, and I'll. And, and I'm I think really those going people to... using your text program like that are going to be tech savvy, and they are going to be like intelligent as you know for the most part as to what's going on. Right. I say that, but again, we will have that 5% that would just be completely dumb and just say, like, wait, I already am a member, <laughs> and still, like, you know, just give us headaches. But it is a fast way. It would be a great way of getting people signed up really fast, and we could just do something as easy as, like, get a, a free beverage, something else. And, and right now, the sign-up that we have for the loyalty program is uh, simple enough that um, you don't need to – uh, it, we could put other stuff in there, layer other pieces, and they wouldn't fight each other on the offer. The only other thing that it might fight with is just when we do our the the weekly perks and rewards that we have going out. That's all. Where we might be double dipping on that. Now you have it set up though too, Rob. That like if uh, if they've already gotten that reward, like they they won't be able to do it a second time, correct? That, that's right. That's right. 
So they're just only going to get it that first time that they come in and, yeah. and the first time they text in. And, you know, you want to make, I, I always recommend, you know, a free mallard, a free sandwich with a minimum purchase as the offer as opposed to a free drink because the more aggressive you can make that offer and you do a quick expiration date on it, obviously you're going to get a lot more people in it, but you're doing enough with purchase that if they do happen to come back within that two weeks and redeem it, you still make a little bit, right? Um, it works a lot better. Um, and just that's from experience, right? And obviously we want to have the biggest databases as possible. So, but you guys can, you guys can think about what that offer is. Um, uh, so are so we on the, gonna have, like you're so, putting an expiration date on that. Do you do it like just when, like say like they, uh, like two weeks from the date that they texted in, is that how it works? Or do, are you putting a hardcore like date? Like here's when they can do like, this is when the coupon expires. Yeah, we put a hardcore date on it, okay. and then we just change it, update it, sometimes twice a week, sometimes once a week. It depends. So, you know, people that text in today might have two weeks and four days. People that text in in two days might have two weeks and two days. And then, you know, until it gets until it gets changed. Um, okay. We have in our future, we've got a future module that we're building right now that has modifiable dates, but it's not scheduled for release till like August, right? Yeah, Where the dates I think I update would be more... on it comfortable with that one just in the fact that like it would almost like you'd have to run the campaign for like we're telling them that it's going to expire like i mean you have a two-week period it's almost like you can only run that 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 campaign for like one week because you want to give them at least one week no. like the last person who uses no 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 so you're going to run the same point of sale campaign for we recommend about 90 days okay right your your printed materials that you're handing out stay exactly the same all the entire time. The offer that the person gets back, so you see somebody that texts in today to this has, you know, roughly two weeks to redeem it. it might be two weeks and three days. It might be 13 days. The expiration date is not on the POP. The expiration date is on the mobile coupon they get back on their phone. And somebody that comes in two weeks, you know, seven days from now, They've got approximately two weeks to redeem it based on what's on their mobile coupon. And somebody comes in a week after that has approximately two weeks to redeem it from when they opted in. It's from when they opted in. It's from when they texted in. Right. So you can have the exact same POP up for two months, and every single person that gets a coupon has approximately two weeks to redeem it. Does that make sense? It does. I'm just trying to think like in my head because you said on your end that you don't change that date on the on the coupon going out. Like, a, like say like a – No, I, yeah, we do – we do. We, oh, we manage okay. that. We manage that for you. That's why I, I said we do that two or three, you know, two times, uh, sometimes three times a week, but usually two times a week. OK, so like if you want it to be two weeks out, you know, we're going to set Tuesdays and Thursdays to change the dates. OK, or Tuesdays and Fridays or whatever, depending on what our schedule is like. And we'll go into all 30 of your campaigns and change all 30 of those dates. We can do it. Uh, where we run a, and sometimes we do it if we've got like some of our customers have 600 locations mm -hmm. and we do it with programming and we go in and, and do a custom where we switch it and that's just to save our time. So if we decide to do it like that, it'll update every day, two weeks out. <laughs> if we don't, if we do it manually, it'll be roughly two weeks, but you don't have to do anything. That's my, that's my point. Uh, the other question I have is like people who are like in our loyalty program that have marked the sign up to do tax. Um, so they don't, yeah, I mean, like, would we just blast them or are you just going to say like, again, like they just need to come in and see that, that, that thing. And when they come in, it's going to be up to them. They're already getting text. They're already going to be getting their three text messages a month that you guys are going to schedule out. Right. Mm -hmm. They're going to be getting their three or four texts a month where you're sending something out to them with, you know, sometimes a coupon, sometimes a reminder, Sometimes a link to the you know online ordering system, or you know whatever right inside that text message. You know sometimes it'll be a coupon, whatever. They're already going to be getting that. But if they come in and they see the point of sale material, and they want to text in to get that offer, uh, after you know they get the receipt, and on top of the receipt is this card that says this, and they text in to get that. They're going to go into that store specific database, but they're only going to get that offer one time, right? right. So it's it's not that big it's not that big of a deal. Um 
because, like I said, there's enough with purchase offer that it's okay. He got that deal, <laughs> um, and it's a short time frame. So, you know, the majority of your customers, some of them probably come in once a week, but the majority of them, you know, the frequency is, and you know this better than I do, but I'm guessing from other, you know, quick service restaurants I've worked with, you know, their average customer uh, repeat visit is about every three and a half weeks. Um, I, do you guys know your numbers better than that? Do you have an average? I think we're a little bit better than that for our regular customers. I think it's like just over two times a month. Yeah, that's that's really good for – but those are your regular customers, right? This right, program yeah. is designed to take some of your – not that regular customers and get them to buy from you, you know, three extra times over the course of a year. Right. And, um, you know, for sure, for some of those people, they're not in your loyalty program for sure. Um, but they came in, you know, once every five weeks cause they just, cause you're in the area and they sometimes think about you, but they don't always think about you. Well, one of the times they come in, they're going to text in because you got a nice sounding offer. And then, they're in your database and now they're actually going to start increasing the frequency and maybe they're going to sign up for your loyalty program as well because they click that link and fill it out. And now we turn them into more of an evangelist of our brand, right? Coming in two every two weeks now instead of once every six. But those texts are just going to be living in that campaign. Right? Those like the info, like if they don't say they don't sign up for the the loyalty program and they just think that they're signed up for a text program, they're only going to be living in that database, yeah. correct? Yeah, the only thing, the only place you've got them is in that store specific database. But you've got the most important piece of information that you could have from them. You have their mobile phone number, and you know they're seeing every coupon and every offer that you send out to them. Um, whereas email, you're probably averaging 20% open rates and, no, you know, up to 40, up to 40. That's really good. Yeah, actually it's really even higher. We purged our list when we switched over from the Flamingo fan club. Yeah. And so just with the new list, I mean, back in the day we were like closer to 30 at yeah. 8,000 and now just where we've dropped down, um, we actually are, uh, we have a higher open rate. That's excellent. Oh, I know. I mean, but again, we're a restaurant, so it's like we should be up high. I mean, sure. Um, I guess one thing that we could do, like, Alan, if we wanted to, like, reach out to the people who'd sign up in that campaign is kind of, like, compare the list of the people who are in the loyalty program. And if they haven't signed up for the loyalty program, we could push maybe through, like, a text to just those phone numbers, uh, just those text numbers, the, the mobile numbers, um, to get them to sign up for the loyalty program a second time. You know? I mean, is that an option or no? I don't think I understand. Okay, again, what you're kind of creating with some of these text campaigns is is really, truly, I mean, is another form of another loyalty program because we are getting them through your text, you know, to sign up for the loyalty, but they come over into our information database. But the ones that are, like, clicking through and, and doing that text and sending it to you are, are going to be in that campaign, okay? So you're going to have a whole list to say, like, 3,000 of, uh, you know, 3,000, um, text that we can send text out to. We just don't know how many of those people might be like on our loyalty list already. But if there's any on that list that never click through to the the loyalty program, it would be nice to like reach out and kind of tap them into like getting into our loyalty program. So we yeah, have, we could yeah we could do that later. Okay, that's why you're, I was just trying to, like trying to figure out like comparing that campaign list. There's maybe like a thousand that never did it. And since we have the complete list in our database of, of text, it would be nice just to compare those two and just shoot like a, a text just out to people who were using just the text, but they hadn't signed their number up yet to get the start earning rewards. Yeah, absolutely. You can absolutely okay. do that. We would, um, it would take just a little finagling of the data, but we could help yeah, you with that. Yeah, it's just kind of like you're just kind of, how I do with the emails again, it's just like we're yeah, just dumping absolutely. into it and it, you know, and it can pull it out really easy. Yep. Okay. So, so are we all on the same page then? A nice point of sale program. Let me let me throw out a couple more things about it. Um, we need to decide what that offer is, and then have somebody mock up what the cards would look like. Um, we want to do. You can have freestanding POP, 
like counter displays or signage. But your opt-ins are going to, you know, even with a great call to action like this, you might average about 8, 10, 12 people per day into your database per location. Okay? If you actually hand them a card and you tell them, make sure and text in and get that free sandwich for next time, then your numbers will about double. Okay? So, you know, just for some perspective, how many locations do you guys have again? I should know this off the top of my head, but I don't. It's like 30, right? 18. 18. You know, if you're running a card, you're going to get about 25 people a day per location or about 450 people a day. So, you know, 160 days later, you know, we can have a good 72,000 people in the database roughly. I mean, I see ways that I like to do it. I mean, one thing, I mean, yeah, doing it in the stores is, is a good idea, but you are just getting the same people a lot of times. They, they do come in on a repetitive basis at certain locations a sure. lot. Um, I see value in this really like if I'm out at a – like we have three events this month in April. Right. And to me, like handing them a text there because, again, if they came into the restaurant and they were already there, they saw the – got the card or whatever um, – his, I mean, and again, this is, and I'm just using a one to two percent example of our people, but they would stand there and quickly like text that in, get their offer, and turn right around and, and in that same visit after they've already closed out the other one, or they just were waiting and they did it and just get it all at one visit rather than the next time. Yeah, but they, if you give it to them after the transaction, so you're not giving it to them beforehand. That's why I like to do it post transaction. Oh, I know. Right. Here, I again, I have an exa a beautiful example yeah. of that was our scratch off cards that we gave as prizes. Like at the end of their meal, after they've paid, it was presented. You know, like just say, hey, it, like it was supposed to be for like a next time visit. And right. again, they just used it there, or they bitched at us into like you know wanting to use it. Uh, so I, I mean, to me, I'm excited of seeing this work outside of the restaurant. Like where, no, like, if I, like if I was like at an event, I can see that really, really like. Yeah. And we're gonna and let's talk about events here in a second. I don't mean to cut you off, but let, mm -hmm. let me throw one more thing in. Your the scratch off thing might have been like an actual like real free item potentially, but when you're doing it with a, a big enough with purchase and you're doing it post transaction. No, they were. I mean, there was coupons, Rob. They were yeah. just regular. Regular I mean, coupons. And they made the same purchase right there, and that was good. But the whole idea was to get them to come back in a second time and maybe like bring someone with them. Or, right. Oh yeah. Or they sure. Were, yeah. So, I mean, I, and that's again, I'm just throwing out all the obstacles that we like think about like when we're doing stuff like that. I mean, I'm not discounting that saying that that's you know, the overall good, what are we expecting to get out of it? That's what I have to compare it against. Yeah, and, no. and again, is, you know, is there any timer on the on the return texts that that we send out? Like a delay, Alan. Yeah, like yeah. a delay. No, it's got to be uh it's got to be instant. Um, okay. There's no delay on that. There, you could do an autoresponder where they get an instant text message and then they get another message 24 hours later with an offer. But the problem with that is you can't send the redeemable coupon on a delay. So what I mean is this has to be instantaneous where they get the redeem one-time redemption coupon you could send a regular text message with no redeem button <laughs> and that text message says, you know, free sandwich with purchase of whatever, whatever expires XYZ, um, coupon code XYZ in the text message itself. The problem with that is they show that text message and then come back two days later and show it again, right? With this... Yeah. With this one-time redemption button, you have to deliver it at the time that they engage. But Again, Rob, we're just talking like it's probably five percent of people who would do that if if they would do it at all. Yeah, and if they did, it's enough with purchase that they just spent more money with you that that day, right? Hopefully. Right. Now the idea about you know building up like the numbers I showed, four thousand people per location over the course of four or five or six months by running a strong point of sale campaign, you know, with cards, which is what we recommend. Um, you know, out of those four thousand people, you may only have you know fifteen hundred of them in this database that were your regular 
week or a week and a half or two week visitors. Half of those people are going to be the people like I kind of described that come in once every couple months. And those are the people, you know, that we really, really want because now we're going to be able to get them, you know, stay in front of them a little bit more. And out of those 2000 people per location, you know, that are, we're not our super regular customers, you know, times our 19 locations or whatever the case may be. And that's 38, 38,000. We get three extra transactions out of them over the course of a year, just three extra visits. You know, it's 114,000 extra transactions times eight bucks. You know, it's almost a million dollars of increased revenue from our once a month people. So if, there's uh, a real. If they don't, if they don't, if the employee doesn't hit re, like like redeem or like, I mean, I know that you're the. Because we have a rule even against that about us like touching a, a customer's phone and stuff. But just say. Yeah, you have phone. just like just like the Groupon app. You have the uh -huh. customer do it. Right. And they, um, and they and they have to show you the redeemed coupon to get it. Right. But again, like even if they didn't hit that, like that would just disappear like at, in that after when the expiration date was set for it, correct? No, but when they show the coupon the next time, it'll be the expiration date will be passed. Okay. Yep. So all your server, all your a person has to do is look at the phone, make sure the expiration date isn't passed, and make sure that they hit redeem. It's really fast. I mean, we have a lot of people that do really high volumes that use it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any server training piece? Uh, I, it seems oh so simple, but you know to get that uh, eighteen year old Saturday night server to know what to yeah. do when when it comes absolutely in, we do we do, we do two things here okay one we're gonna go in here to campaigns and we're gonna hit keyword we're gonna hit create and we're gonna say employees store one and then we are gonna type in store one x y and this is going to be our employee database, right? Disclaimer. Now, that's store X, Y. Now we're going to save it. Now we're going to go into our kiosk. We're going to create an employee kiosk real quick for store number one. Gonna upload our logo. And now I just created this. Oh, what happened to my logo? Didn't I upload it? I thought I saw it did, but maybe it didn't go all the way through. Did I move too fast? What happened? Oh my goodness, it didn't work. That's weird. I'm not hearing you I'm not seeing you click on anything. It's like like after you click that there's nothing like where it's like it's over Yeah. Usually I double click it and it works. But it appears it's not maybe I lost my session. I don't know. Anyway, maybe it just temporarily broke. But when it drops the logo in there, it creates this page, right? Right. I hit save. And then, oh, I know why. Hold on. I didn't save this first part. Yeah. I bet that's why. I didn't have anything to save to the database. Let me try it one more time. I forgot to hit the first save button. There it is. Okay. Then I hit save. Now it created it. Now all I do is grab this link. Now I can send this to my store manager, right? 
and I tell him, open this link up on your computer and have all the employees type their mobile number right in there. Okay. When the employees type their mobile number in, they're in your database. Now, if the manager needs a, some, somebody calls in for a sick shift or something, he can text everybody and say, hey, can anybody cover? Call me right now and put his phone number in there. But you guys can actually send a message to all your employees. employees like if we had to close early or if there was snow or whatever. Yeah, and we can send them, we can create a training video, okay, that shows them what the coupons look like, how they're going to redeem it, commonly asked questions, et cetera, et cetera. And I can put together like a 10-minute video, right? And then we can text it out to everybody's phones and they can watch it right on their phone. Um, we could also schedule a 8 o'clock in the morning conference call or webinar and do a live version for everybody to join if you guys wanted to. And I can train them on some of those elements. I'm more than willing to do that. Or I can train your managers and they can train the staff with the videos. You know, it's up to you. All right, those are some good options. Yeah, we'll need to – some of the stuff we really need to chew on, Rob. <laughs> That's okay. I think, yeah. Okay, let's talk about one more thing real quick. You saw how I created this kiosk, right? Mm -hmm. You said you got three events this week. Any That's of those events? Month, right. This month, yeah. Any of those events, you know, create an offer, create a keyword, go into your campaigns, go into the marketing platform, mm -hmm. create a nice mobile coupon for a nice free offer with purchase, just like I did, and I can help you create those and make sure that they're right and look good. And then go in and create a tablet landing page. And then at your event, Everybody that walks by your table, have them type their mobile number in to get an instant coupon. Or man one, one of your girls to stand out front of the line and have everybody type their mobile number in while they're waiting in line. It's a very easy way to get a whole bunch of people in the database. So that's the does purpose that, of a kiosk. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Once you create that kiosk, with that coupon, you name it, you know, event one or whatever. And then they go in the database of all the people from that event. What can you do? You can turn around and text them the next and day. Thank you for like stopping by our booth, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Another thing we do, which I'm just going to show you guys as you're t thinking about things, and you can show this to your other marketing person too because I'm recording this video. But here's another thing that we've been doing lately on some mobile coupons that's really cool on point of sale campaigns, okay? So point of sale, someone comes in and they text in after they got the receipt, you know, they got the receipt, they text in and they get this message back for the free sandwich. And instead of, you know, send them the loyalty program or maybe we put the loyalty program up in the first message, potentially, I don't know. But we say, this is what some people have been doing. I'm just gonna show it to you and you can, you know, just so it's in your mind, right? And you might do it in an event even. You say, um, and then you put the link to your Facebook page right there. And then what happens is a large portion of people will take a selfie, post it to your Facebook page, and then instantly they all of their friends see that. Because that's different than you posting something on your own Facebook page. This is your uh, you know, five people a day per location taking a picture with their sandwich, posting it on your Facebook page, and all of their friends actually see that because that's them posting, right? And they see this interaction between, you know, and you're starting a conversation. Now your social media person gets on there and can respond back to those people and really start a conversation. And the right, just the number me, of Rob. And that's you. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> there you go. But it's a great way to actually start getting people to actually have an interaction with you. We we call it starting a conversation, mm -hmm. right? It's a way to actually get them to interact with you. It works way better than saying, hey, like us on Facebook or whatever, you know, that we do on our menus and stuff like that. So this is something you could do at events too if you wanted to, right? 
The other thing to keep in mind as we're talking about this stuff is, well, a couple things. You know, obviously we talked about the tablet, creating a tablet landing page for events and stuff like that. Or even if just once, you know, once or twice a week at each location, you have uh, an extra employee, you know, stand there in, in the line as everybody's coming in and just tells them to type their mobile number in, you know, for something for some special offer, right? All right. Um, when you're sending out messages to people, some of the messages that you send out, you know, are going to be offers where they click and get it a, get that one-time redemption coupon when they click. Sometimes you might just link them to the menu and say, you know, click order now and we'll deliver it to you or, you know, click order now and pick it up for your office, right? And you send that out at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday when you know a lot of people haven't decided where they're going for lunch, right? And they get a message about, you know, hey, I can order right now for my phone for the whole office. They turn to their coworkers and say, hey, let's just order here, right? And they click the link and can order right from their phone. Um, sometimes, you know, you might put the phone number to call or, you know, whatever. So link to the menu sometimes, right? Or send something out about Facebook. Or send, send something about, about, the, about the loyalty program. Um, the other thing I was going to say was, and we can talk about incentivized social sharing, but let's talk about that later. The other thing I was going to say was, you know, like the print ads you do, right? Or any traditional marketing. I don't know if you, you know, radio or anything else that you guys do. Instead of doing it this way, where we do an actual print coupon, do it this way where we say, Hey, to get the coupon, we send it right to your phone, text us word to this phone number. And now we're actually taking people that are potential customers that look at that offer and go, Ooh, that's a good offer. I'm interested in it. But instead of cutting it out, they just text in and they can get it. And how many of those numbers can we make? Well, it's not, the, it's not the number that changes, okay? Okay. Uh, that way you have the text down. It's this word, right? So sometimes... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I got you. So sometimes it might be Mallard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might be, you know, for each location, you're going to have a different word, but it's going to be Isaac's 1, Isaac's 2, Isaac's 3, Isaac's 4, Isaac's 5, Isaac's 6 for each and, location. Okay. Yep, and for us, they'll always be texting 72727. That's correct. Yep. yep. Okay. What do you guys want I mean, to circle Robin, up? We didn't want to have to like I mean to to break it down by location. I know like I mean I know the value in that, but if we just wanted to send like a mass, mass yeah. like, you know, mass, we could just pick one, like say like Mallard in all seven at, at all seventeen locations. Absolutely. It just means that we would know that it was just that it, it fell underneath that campaign. Like yep. for example, like if we put something like. Uh, whatever we put in, say, like a Clipper magazine, would, it would have to be like something that was attached that would say like that was a Clipper campaign. That's right. Okay. All right. I think our next step is Alan is just like, and Rob, you said you'll send this to us. Like you have a presentation you could send that we can like go over it with Mike. Yeah, I actually this I recorded. This being recorded. Sorry. Yeah, I recorded this, so like I can that. just. Yep. Rob, can you run one thing through one part with me real quick, mm -hmm. um, which is on the groups. Um, I saw how you set up groups and have different groups, and and then I saw um, – I actually wanted to add one member to one group <laughs> and couldn't figure out how to do it. Yeah, um, you have to create a new group and then do a combo group, and I don't know oh, how to okay. do it. I don't know how to do it either, but support does. Okay. So <laughs> if you call, Wait. yeah, if, if you call the support, the they can do it. I know. Okay. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean I know how to use any of the tools. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, they can do it. So just email support at avidmobile.com, or you can log in and open a support ticket by just clicking on tickets and tell them what you want to do, and they can do it. Yeah. Okay. 
Actually, and I just thought through, when you said that, now I know how to do it. You make a group, and then there's another place where you can move members around in groups, and you would just move that person from the one group to the other group. Yeah. So, okay. Um, um, did you see the, the two that we sent out, which were pretty much like big, dumb, or not big, dumb, they were just plain old blasts? Uh, one went to the list of people who signed up for texts who have never been, who have never uh, actually, uh, we don't have record of them being a loyalty member, so we don't have a record of them ever coming in. Yep. Is there any, oh, on this map, is there any way to, to zoom in on it, or is that pretty much what no, you No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's just relative. Yep. And people probably moved from Oklahoma, and now they're living here, right? Right. Yep. Yep. So. Okay, so we'll okay. just keep working with it, and. and uh... Well, here's my here's my suggestion. You guys talk about it. Show the video to. Uh, the other people that you need to. Um, you might pre-build a, the couple campaigns the way that you think they're going to work. And then why don't we set another 50, you know, maybe even create your mock-up of what your point of sale material is actually going to look like, right? And then let's meet again and let me talk to you about making sure all your terms and conditions are right and your messages are right and compliant and that we've got a good program. And We'll tweak it a little bit before you actually go live with anything. Okay, that would work for me. Okay. Yep. What, why don't you guys talk about it and then schedule something with me into next week or whenever you're ready. Obviously, we want to do at least make sure our campaigns for the next event are ready. But, you know, you could roll this point of sale campaign out, you know, in two weeks as soon as you got the print materials ready. And we can train your sales staff very quickly. So as soon as you're ready, let's do it. Right. I don't know if okay. like to experiment Word. with the events as opposed to like point like at a store.